In this video, we're going to look at how to set up the Salesforce company profile, which consists of the overview, fiscal years, business hours and holidays, my domain, and languages. I'm logged in and I'm looking at the company information page. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory, but I want to point out a few quick points here. Default language, uh, locale and time zone will set the default settings for new users created in the org. Uh, use data space and use file space give you a breakdown of storage usage throughout your, your Salesforce org. And the difference between data storage and file storage is that data storage is records such as opportunities, cases, leads, etc. File storage are the attachments, um, so chatter files, documents, and so on. Important to understand the distinction between the two and also to understand where to go to monitor usage of both. API requests. Important to know where to monitor your API usage, particularly if you're loading a ton of data in. This is the easiest place to go and monitor your usage against your daily allotted maximums. The Salesforce organization ID is unique for every Salesforce org, whether it be production, sandbox, Every single org is going to have a unique ID. That's where to find it and is often uh, referenced for support cases such as feature activation. Licensing is all listed below as well. If you've got 10 hires starting next month and you need to know how many licenses you have available, this is the place to go. Fiscal years come in two flavors. They impact forecasting and reporting. A standard fiscal year is four quarters per year, three months per quarter, and you can set either the start month or the end month. So I could be, I could have a fiscal year January through December. I could have July through June, um, but I don't have any more control than that. So if I wanted to have say a fiscal quarter determined by number of weeks, then I would need to use a custom fiscal year. The key thing to understand with custom fiscal years is that once you turn them on, you can't turn them off. And there are some implications when it comes to, to development and app exchange compatibility. So make sure that if you enable custom fiscal years that you've, you've done your homework. The last thing to note about fiscal years in general is that changing fiscal years can cause you to lose data. So make sure to read up and, and really be thorough about it before making any changes to a live environment. Business hours and holidays are combined to form hours of operations. So business hours essentially would say, you know, my department or my company is open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's what a business hours sets the, the framework for your hours of operations. What holidays do is they subtract certain days of the year from those hours of operations. So if my business hours were Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Tuesday as a holiday, then these two, the business hours and holidays combined, impact when case escalation rules occur. So if I had a case uh, come in at 3 p.m. on Monday, and I have a four-hour escalation rule, so if, if somebody hasn't responded to the case within four hours, I'm going to notify the case manager, or I'm going to take some sort of other remediation action, then normally this would fire at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, but since Tuesday is a holiday, it's going to wait and it's actually going to fire at 10 a.m. on Wednesday. And that's really what business hours and holidays allow you to do is to set the framework for your hours of operations. Now, you can set up multiple business hours and multiple holidays. So I could have a standard team that's open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I could have a 24 by 7 or a gold or a premier team that's open uh, all the time. Now let's say hypothetically that you know my 24 by 7 team I give them one day a year off they get Christmas off but um, and so does my standard team but they also get off the 4th of July. You've got a lot of granularity there so you can control you know you can have many different business hours you can have many different holidays and you can have many holidays that are related to many different business hours. My domain is a feature that allows you to do some custom branding of your login page. So instead of logging in at login.salesforce.com, I could log in at certifiedondemand.my.salesforce.com. It's pretty easy to configure. We aren't going to walk through it, but it's fairly straightforward. So I'm looking at the language settings page. 
And there are three tiers of language support, fully translated, end user, and platform. And as you can see, the fully translated languages are all enabled by default. And this displayed languages list means that the language can be selected when creating or editing a user. If I want to enable end user or platform languages, I have to do so specifically. And I can remove any language that isn't currently in use. Now just because a language is enabled doesn't necessarily mean that it's been translated. Um, Translation is a whole other issue and we'll talk more about that later. Thanks for watching.